our hands. Father God, we're able to walk upon our limbs. And for that, we say thank you, Lord. Now, Lord, we ask the Lord that I would just touch us through the midst of this service, dear Lord. Touch the choir that they may say for the depths of their heart. Touch every scripture, every prayer, every preached word, dear Lord. That everything today will be for thy glory, dear Lord. If someone will say it was good to have been in the house of the Lord on this day. In Jesus' name, we say amen. I If my mother 
God, we come to you now, just as humble as we know how, God. Your servants, God, just let me just tell you, thank you, God. Thank you, God, for all that you've done. Thank you for all that you're going to do, God. God, we ask you, God, to just open up our minds and give us the knowledge and the wisdom as the man of God preach your word, God. Give us an understanding, God, that we'll be able to apply to our everyday lives, God. Yes, Lord. God, anything that's not like you, God, cleanse us, God, from the top of our head to the soles of our feet, God. God, we ask you to do it for us right now, God. Right. God, we ask you, God, to touch those that are sick, God. You know what where their body at, God. God, we ask you, God, to just do it right now for us, God. Because your word said by your stripes we are healed, God. So we know that you are healer, God. We know that you are deliverer, God. But God, we ask you, God, to come into this service, God. And bless us right now, God. Give us what we need, God. God, give us the bread that we need to eat that we can apply to everyday life, God. God, Fill our thirst, God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. We just want to tell you, thank you, God. Thank you for our life, health, and strength. Thank you for allowing us when we woke up this morning. We have mobility of our arms. God, we just want to tell you, thank you, God. Thank you. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let it
Grab it, 
Sister Laura Willoughby, Sister Ethel Fields, Sister Darla McLawrence, Sister Dorothy Jean Reed, Mother Lois Lewis, Mother Naomi Jenkins, Greensboro, North Carolina, Trustee Willie Wooten, Greenfield Place, Greenfield, North Carolina, Sister Cleola Johnson, Mother Lena May Nobles, and Sister Cynthia Tyson. Sister Maddie Wooten, Betty, Sister Betty Wooten. Let us pray. <clears throat> Our Father, which are in heaven, Father, first we come to thee thanking you. Thanking you, Father, for all of your blessings yes, and for bringing us thus far into another day. Yes, we thank you, Father. We praise you. We honor you and give you all yes, glory. Father, we come now asking in your name, for you have told us in your word that if we ask not, we have not. Yes. And Father, we understand and we realize that in this life, you have told us in your word that we will have trial and tribulation. Yes. And a man born of a woman is here for a few days and full of trouble. Yes. But Father, we still thank you and we thank pray you. Yes. Yes. Glory yes. Glory you and we lift you up to the highest. But Father, we know if we continue to lift you up, then we will be lifted up. Yes. And yes. we come to pray, continue to praise your name, Father, for as we praise you and praise you, then praise will continue to be in our mouths. And for this, we thank you. Thank, yes, thank you. And we praise you, Father. And Father, we ask now that all who are going through, you know the situation, you know all about all of us. Yes, yes. You know all about everyone, everywhere, at the same time. Yes. And we ask you now, Father, will you touch the minds, the heart, the bodies of all your people. Yes. We don't sing about anyone, we don't leave out anyone. We pray that we will continue to just understand that we need not to be fault finders, but we need to be those that will lift each other up. Yes, yes Lord. And we can come to you, petition your grace and your love and your mercy, Father. But if we do nothing ourselves, then we fall in short. We fall in short. So yes, we Lord. need to live as your word tells us to do. And we need to continue to praise and uplift everyone. You know the situation, Father, better than we do, so we yes. just ask you to come to bless, touch, and heal. Yes, in the Lord. name of Jesus, for it's in Jesus' name that we do pray. Amen. 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 Let it your hearts and your minds are clear and free from any distraction. We are going to prepare ourselves to receive the word. We're going to hear from none other than the, than the man that God has chosen for this branch of Zion. Amen. As he comes to us today, he uh, comes knowing that his wife is at home and, and she's in, in good hands because God has her. Amen. But he comes ready to break the bread of life, ready Amen. to feed the people that God has placed under his care. He comes ready to nurture. He comes ready to love. So after the choir has sang a selection of their choosing, we will hear from none other than our pastor, the Reverend Malcolm Emmanuel Lewis. Amen. Amen. What he done for other he do. 
one in there for you now. <laughs> Trying right, to do things song. Hallelujah anyhow. Amen. Don't let any trouble get you down. Amen. Amen. Say they try to block your path. Mm -hmm. You just stand up anyhow hallelujah. and say hallelujah. Amen. Anyhow. Amen. You know why you say hallelujah anyhow? Tell me that hallelujah is what? So no matter what comes your way, praise him anyway. When the things are going well, you say hallelujah. When things are not so good, you say hallelujah. Hallelujah anyway. Somebody ought to have a hallelujah. Praise him for Knowing all that the Lord has brought you through. Because if it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, where would we be? We would be lost without him. But thank God almighty. Yes. I've got a testimony. Yes. I hope you have a testimony. Yes. May not be like my testimony. Yes. But you all have a testimony. Yes. There's nothing else to say that the Lord woke me this morning. Yes. Started me on my way. Yes. Thank you. You're looking at a mirror. Yes. You're looking at a mirror. Yes. Jesus, just now. He was saved 
just now. Come to Jesus. Will you come to Jesus? The scriptures say, come to Jesus. All Come to, to me. Jesus is speaking. All ye that labor and are heavy laden, I will give you rest. I don't know about you, Anderson Chapel, but we are living in a time where it seems like there is no rest. All around us, it seems that there's trouble on every hand and trouble on every side. Amen. This coming Thursday, we will celebrate another Thanksgiving. Yeah. For me, it will be another 58 Thanksgiving. I may not remember the first couple, first few, but still 58 Thanksgiving. Amen. Some have experienced more, some have experienced less. Mm -hmm. But the Lord has blessed us to experience another year that we celebrate for Thanksgiving. But the interesting thing about it is we know that nat nationally, nationwide, there is a day of thanks. But I want to let you know that every day is a day of thanksgiving. Yes, because if the Lord has touched you and awakened you and let you rise up of your sleeping couch, somebody ought to say, Lord, I thank you for another day. Yes. If the Lord touches your eyes that you're able to see the sunshine, somebody ought to say, Lord, I thank you for another day. Even if you can't see the sun and you feel the rays beaming upon your face, somebody ought to say, Lord, I thank you. Because in reality, it could have been the other way. As we look all around, we have dealt with so many things this year. Hurricane Florence, Hurricane Michael, there have been tsunamis, there have been cyclones, there have been tornadoes, there have been fires, there have been floods. All around us. And as we look, and I, I, I just had to pause myself just, just, just the other day. And I, and I thought of the lives that perished during the hurricane. I thought of the damage of the homes and even the roads and the highways. And all that happened through Hurricane Florence and how my family in particular was afflicted, afflicted, afflicted by the floods. But I, then I look and I see the fires in California. Yes. I see the devastation. I see a town called Paradise. Utterly destroyed. Individuals in their vehicles trying to escape a fire. Consumed in the midst of the fire. Last count I heard, there were some 80-some deaths through these fires. And there's a reported still over a thousand people unaccounted for. Through all of this, somebody hearts have got to be hit. Somebody's mind has got to be troubled. Well, Somebody somewhere or another even says, how can we praise the Lord in a time like this? But we just sang hallelujah anyhow. A few weeks ago, somebody in this very same church, they sung the song, anyway you bless me, Lord, I be satisfied. I want to tell you it's a lot harder to really say anyway you bless me Lord I'll be satisfied and live up to that expectation. Yeah, yeah. But it's a lot easier to say hallelujah anyhow. Amen. Because the reality of it is everything that happens to us our first thought our first reaction, our first response is not to be thankful, not to be satisfied with everything that happens in our lives. You're right. so true. Sister Wooten told me this morning as I spoke to her, she said as she's going through this ordeal with her heart, she said that on yesterday that she kind of got into a melancholy atmosphere attitude where she asked for the hospital chaplain to come in because she needed prayer. Amen. Yes. 
This is a, one of the reasons why she said, ask the church body just to pray for her. Yes, yes. Pray for her. But if you can, go a little further. Pick up your phone. Call her. Encourage her. Yes. Let her know that God is right there by her side. Yes. And all that she goes through, say hallelujah. Yes. Anyhow. Don't let Satan block your blessing. Praise God. Anyhow. Yes. November the 1st, my wife went under the knife. Many of you probably received a text from me that said that when she woke up and she was coming through, she told, she said that some mean people cut her. <laughs> cut her in the stomach and cut her in the back. Because of the medicine that she was under, she didn't know, she, she was really having, she knew she had the pain. She knew something happened, but she was just kind of out of it a little, little bit. But when she comes around, she says, thank God for another day. Yes, yes. She's laying in the hospital and Malik is there with us on Thursday and you know I, I, I've gotten into this, this thing but I try to keep my, keep my mind and my body a little exercised and right down the street from, from, from Duke, Raleigh Duke Hospital is a Planet Fitness. So I decided that I'll go down to Planet Fitness. I decided that I'll drive down then and it struck me and say, it's only eight-tenths of a mile away. I'm going to go down to Planet Fitness and spend about an hour, hour and a half in there. If I walk down there, I'll spend 20 minutes in there and walk back. <laughs> and that's, that's less time. But I want to tell you right now, the exercise will kill you. Now. You, you, need, you need to be aware of this. The exercise can kill you. Uh, <laughs> No, it won't kill you the way that you think it'll kill you. But on Thursday, I went through the same routine that I did on, on, on Friday. I went through the same routine I did on Friday, uh, Thursday. Left Malik at the hospital and I walked down to Planet Fitness. I was crossing at the crosswalk. The light is red. So I know not to walk when the light's red. Mm -hmm. I waited for the light to turn green. Mm -hmm. I waited for the traffic to stop. Mm -hmm. There was this young lady in a red car. She stopped. She had her head turned to the left. Wow. Everybody know you can turn right on red if it's safe to do so. Mm -hmm. This lady, she never turned her head to the right. Mm -hmm. I want to let you know that you're looking at a miracle standing here today. Right because that car struck me. I knew as I was walking along, I saw the car moving and, and I knew that I couldn't go back. I got to go forward. I took, as I was walking along, I took and I banged on the hood of her car just like that, trying to get her to stop. I didn't do exactly an action figure roll, but I had to do a little <laughs> roll. Thank God that my, I, my feet wasn't planted. I, I kind of rolled across the hood a little bit. And st I, I'm, I'm all right. She did hit me on my left thigh. And, uh, as I'm walking across, there's another gentleman at the stoplight there. And he said, are you all right? I said, I'm, 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 I'm fine. And... Because I know, I know this, that my wife is laying in the hospital. And the last thing she needs right now is to hear that her husband is in the emergency room. Truth be known, she still doesn't know about this story yet. <laughs> she still doesn't know about this story quite yet. But if somebody has anything to be thankful for, I've got something to be thankful for because I'm here to tell the story. And those of you who may who may be privy to the news out of Raleigh, if you ever watch the news in Raleigh, you hear all the time of pedestrians being hit in Raleigh. Sometimes they're trying to cross 440. Sometimes they're crossing across Capitol. Sometimes they're at an intersection. But they are, you hear all the time of someone being hit. But I'm one of the lucky ones. I'm one of the blessed ones that I'm here able to tell the story. Hallelujah. Anyhow, God has brought me through. Yes. Yes. So 
know because the Lord has brought me through. Amen. I can tell the story. Amen. And because I can tell the story, I can think to let you know that we need to come to Jesus. Amen. For Jesus himself said, come unto me, all ye that are that are labor and heavy laden, yes. and I will give you rest. Right. Many of us, we have so many trials, tribulations, and difficulties in our life. Sister Taylor, we go through so many things that we don't know how to handle, but we can take it to Jesus. Well, the invitation, he gave us an invitation. Yes, he did. Amen. Yes, he did. Amen. Dr. Knight, sometimes I come to you and I tell you my problems. You didn't ask me to tell you my problems. You didn't even give me an invitation. But Jesus said, come. He said, come. Say him on me. He, he is able. Yes. He's willing. He wants to help. Yes. Amen. No matter what your situation may be. Amen. No matter what the difficulty, whether it's your children, whether it's your spouse, yes. whether it's your job, whether it's your church, whether it's the people in the church, he said, come unto uh -huh. me. me. I have a co-worker who, 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 like, who like many of us and uh, have a kind of a hyper attitude. Kind of, kind of gets a little out of the hand, and and the Lord had given me opportunity one day just, just to let him know that about the way that he kind of carries himself, and he said, "I do that." I said, "Yes." He said, "I didn't realize that I, I sounded like that. I didn't realize I come off like that." So this morning we were sitting around and he asked the question. He said, Does, "Has anybody noticed how I handled the situation the other day?" And uh, and as he was talking, I said, I said, yes, you know, I did notice that. I said, I thought something was different, but I really just didn't notice, notice that. Everybody else is saying, no, they didn't notice, notice a difference. Because you know how some people are, when you're trying to improve yourself, some people just, just pick at you, they tease you, they just talk about you, they just, they just, because some people really don't want to see you improve yourself. Amen. Truth be known, some people just, they are happy that you're just like you are. Yes. Because if you're like you are, they can keep talking about you. Yes. <laughs> but whenever, whenever I, I say, I, I, I did notice a little something different. He said, yes, I pray. Amen. And ask the Lord to help me in that situation. Amen. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Right. If you need help in a situation, you need to take it to Jesus. Yes. I know many of you say, well, 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 the Lord can't do what I need him to do. You don't know what God can do until you give a try. It's better than we can. It's better than we can. Yes. The Lord can open up doors. He can open up resources for you. Amen. You in financial strength? Talk to Jesus. Amen. Take it to Jesus. Let me tell you something. This whole world is in his hands. Amen. Right? Every resource mm -hmm. comes from him. Amen. Because he is the source. Yes, right? And God can do things that you could never imagine. Amen. See, our problem is we put limits on a limitless God. Yeah. He who formed the earth Amen. created this world. He who hung the sun in the sky, yes. the moon to shine by night. Yes. He who created the animals. He who breathed life into our bodies. We limit him. Uh -huh. right. And let me tell you, when you limit God, you are limiting the results. That yes, you yes. So you've got to trust and believe. Coming to me, all you that late labor and are heavy laden, that I will give you rest. Yes. He said, Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. You know, many of us around here, most of us, we grew up around some type farm animal. 
We know about the yoke that was put on there. I know some of you don't know it's Teresa. I know you don't know anything about that yoke around there. Talk to your granddad. He may have one somewhere around there. He know all those older ones. He can find one for you. He show you what that yoke looked like. Sometimes that yoke came two animals together. Usually, in the biblical sense, it usually was two oxen that was tamed together for the work in the field. But Jesus said, take his yoke upon it. His yoke is, 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 is easy. His yoke is, is, is light. It's, it's, he said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. I was looking at one illustration uh, of, of the yoke and on that yoke they had on there, his will and my responsibility. See, the yoke has God's will and our responsibility. But notice this. Think it. First John, the fifth chapter, and third verse says something like this. Say, 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 this is the this is the love of God that you keep his commandments. For his commandments are not grievous. If you follow his will, he doesn't ask you to do things that's irresponsible. He doesn't ask you to do things reckless. Every one of us in here at some point in time has had been into some type of relationship, some type of love, where some boy, some girl, some man, some woman have asked you to do something you know you had no business doing, but you did it anyhow. Amen. All in the name of love. But yet God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Amen. And he just asked us to love one another. And we can't even do that. Amen. His yoke is easy. For he said, learn of me. See, this is one of the reasons why we need to be yoked with him. When we are yoked with the Lord, when we are yoked with Christ, we learn of him. When we learn of him, we learn how to treat one another. When we learn of him, we learn how to trust him. When we learn of him, we learn how to have faith in him. When we learn of him, we learn that no matter what comes our way, hallelujah, it is. Amen. You know, when I was struck by that car, you know, some people, you know, once they land on their feet, there's some not so kind words. <laughs> <laughs> That's directed towards the driver of the car. It wouldn't have done me any good to direct any words towards her anyway because I said, I still don't think to this day she's seen me. <laughs> Even with me banging on the hood of the car, I still don't think she, I think she's still trying to figure out what, what was that noise. <laughs> so why, so, so why get yourself all riled up? Trying to share some words with somebody that doesn't sound nice anyhow. When all you need to do is hallelujah anyhow. Don't let your trouble get you down. Thank God that I'm still here because it could have been the other way. It should have been. I still went on down to Planet Fitness. I got my workout in that day. It didn't did let it deter me. You know, it, 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 and, and that's a word there within itself. That didn't let, I didn't let that deter me, but some people, some people in the church, some, might, some people say things to you in the church, and you let it deter you from working for the Lord. Amen. I want to tell you right now, I'm not working for Dr. Knight. Amen. I'm not working for any of these deacons. Amen. Right now. Last I checked, <laughs> last I checked, you have neither heaven nor no hell. <laughs> Last I checked. <laughs> because I know there's some churches that have some deacons that wheel some mighty high power, <laughs> so they think. <laughs> but the last I checked. <laughs> so it's all for the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. This is why we come to Jesus. Yeah. 
My yoke is easy and my burden is light. We ought to come to Jesus. Everything that we have, all of our trials, all of our tribulations, the songwriters say, what a friend we have in Jesus. What a privilege it is to carry everything to God in prayer. Church of a living God, I'm so glad to know that all that I need, I find in Jesus. I can call him in the morning. I can call him in the noon time. I can call him late at night. Even when you call on me and I I take it to the Lord and say, Lord, you know the situation. Yes. Father, come to the head. Come to the rescue. See, this is one of the reasons why we become yoked together. Because when two pray together, when two come together, touching and agreeing. For Jesus said that if where two or three are gathered together in my name, then I'll be in the midst. Let me tell you, church of a living God, I know you heard the songwriter say it. It's then the invitation. The song is sung in the church of old. Come to Jesus just now. Well, church of a living God, I need to let you know that you need to come to Jesus. Anyhow, you need to come to Jesus at all times. Let's take a look at the woman with the issue of blood. She had a problem, and she said, if I could just touch but the hem of his garment, everything would be all right. Church of a living God. The ten lepers, when they knew that Jesus was coming by, they called Jesus, Lord, have mercy. Church of a living God, we need to come to Jesus. We need to call him in the morning. We need to let him know that we are weak and we are, can't do it by ourselves. But if we call on he who is able to save us, church of a living God, I'm so glad that his show, his burden is so light that he went to Calvary. your favorite shows, you know, y'all those recordings that you like to watch and maybe you, know, you just go on to Hulu or maybe you got your Apple TV and maybe you just pull up all those old extra episodes and everything like that. You know, I just sat around the other night and I, I just, I, I pulled up YouTube and I played about five hours of gospel. Amen. 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 And you know what happens? It draws you closer Amen. to him. When you pick up this book and read it, you know what happens? It draws you closer to him. When you go out with the boys and you drink everything you can find to drink and you curse everyone out that comes your way, you know what happens? It pulls you further away. If you want to draw closer, you got to stay in his word. Amen. If you want to be <laughs> saved, you've got to stay in the word. 
Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Amen. Yes, Amen. For he will save you. Yes, he will. Come, my yoke is easy. Burning this life. Amen. Trust in the Lord. Amen. In all thy ways. And lean not to thy own understanding. We pray that you receive the blessing from the word today. Amen. God is good and greatly to be praised. Yes. And as we celebrate on Thursday with our family, with our friends, hallelujah, anyhow. Don't let the trouble all around you get you down. Just remember, he who saved you is still saved. Yeah. He who healed you is still healing. We've been through so much, and we still got something to go through. Yeah. But God is right there. He'll be right there with you every step of the way. What comes to my mind right now is the form and foot, foot, foot praise and sand. Because, you know, during the good times, there was two sets of footprints. Mm -hmm. But when things really got rough, when the storm began to beat down, well, when it looks like when it when you should have had you should have had someone along with you, you could only find one set of footprints. Right. But the reality of it is, if you look closely enough, you will see that the set of footprints was there. You can't feel the shoes. Because it was him who picked you up and carried you across the way. Yes. And I'm so glad that he's picked me up numbers of times. And he's still picking me up now. He's still picking me up now. Because I want to I I tell you. I want to tell you. I, I, told, I told, told, her, told her this myself. I, I don't say anything that I, that, I, that I wouldn't say to her and already to say to her. My wife sometimes, she can be hard headed. Amen. You know, I'm not going to say all of us. <laughs> but you know, when you're, when you're a caregiver and, and, and you're, having, you're having to deal with, and you're trying to help, and, and people just, they're just not doing what they need to do. And, and sometimes you just want to just want to just want to step back. And sometimes you do have to step back and just say, you know, try it for yourself and let them see that the things you're doing is for their good. And you know, we're like that with God. God is our caretaker, He's our caregiver. And we think we know more than God. Every now and then we say, Lord, I don't need you. I'll do it myself. And we fall flat on our face. And then the first thing we say is, Lord, why did, Lord, why did this happen to me? <laughs> but you know, if you listen to God to begin with, mm -hmm. it wouldn't happen. Amen. But we, we ought to see ourselves just really when you talk about how other people treat you out of all that you do for them, mm -hmm. just step back a little bit and ask yourself the question, how do I treat God all right. Amen. out of all that he's done for me? All right. Amen. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly at heart. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. You have the privilege this afternoon to take Jesus' yoke. You have the privilege to take that yoke. Yoke up with him. He'll make your burdens easy. He'll take your troubles and he'll carry you in the palm of his hand. He'll make life worth living again. Where you used to see nothing, where you used to see darkness, where you used to see total failure, you begin to see hope, you begin to see light, and you begin to believe again. But you got to yoke up with Jesus. Amen. The gospel invitation is extended.
for you to come right now and accept the gift that God gave at Calvary. God gave his son. His son gave his life. That you and I will have a right to everlasting life. But you must accept the gift. You must receive Christ as Lord and Savior. So while the choir sings, come to Jesus. Come to Jesus just now. Please come to your feet in response to the invitation. Come to Jesus. Lord, I thank you for being there for me. For being there faithfully. Yes, you are always there. Wherever I go. Mm -hmm.
something that I said that just touched her and the reason why I say the Lord blessed, blessed her because the Lord just gave me that this morning and I I, I was just I was just singing all around with it, just getting happy with it myself but say that she has kind of left the church but she never left God Amen. That's right. Amen. That's right. but she left, had left the church and now she wants to come back. Amen. Amen. And because the words hallelujah anyhow and come to Jesus. Yes. She decided to yield to that plea today. Amen. Because he's the only one that can do it. Yes. He's the, no matter what we have done, no matter what we have been through. The wonderful thing about it is there's nothing. There's nothing that you have ever done that he doesn't know about. Amen. And all he's been doing is just waiting. Wait for he said, will you come, my child? And he said, come unto me. And I say today, can you come to Jesus? Amen. And you have responded. Do you have anything you would like to say? God bless you. God bless you. Bless you. I, I know your family has said it all with that. <laughs> You say that you say it with your tears, with your tears speaking. Now I you your name your name is still on the church road. It's just this just means that we're coming back in active, being active, being a part. We need them. Yes. We need we need our church bodies. We never needed it before. Amen. We need those who's willing to work, we need those who's willing to stand. And more importantly, God has a blessing in store for you. Yes, he, does. he has a plan for your life. Seek him. Seek his word. Read his word. Study his word. Share his word with others. Talk about. It. You know, sometimes, sometimes some people say you don't talk to those who don't know don't know the Bible. But you know, sometimes, sometimes. Now be careful who you talk to. Amen. Because you don't want them. You don't want them to. Confuse your mind. Amen. But sometimes talk to those who don't know the Bible, they'll even make you have to want to study more. Amen. So when you go back, you have something to tell them. That's right. And associate with those of the kindred spirits of like mind. Be around those who can share good news, good hope. Those who all they ever want to do is just pull you down. You know, that's a problem. Some people love relationships like that. Amen. But that's not the relationship that Christ wants us to have. Christ wants us to have a loving, nurturing relationship. Yes, he does. And from, from the pastor to the ushers at the door, we all have a loving, nurturing relationship. 
So I extend a hands to you. Say, God bless you. Welcome back. Amen. Welcome Amen. back. Amen. Welcome Amen. back. Amen. Anyone have anything to say other than hallelujah? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless Amen. you. Thank you.
God bless you. We thank you, God, today. We thank each of you for making service wise again today. We thank the Lord for his many blessings. If there's nothing else to draw our attention, it's just enough. Oh, it's that time of the year, everybody. Y'all know I bug with church every year about donating to me to give to the nursing home. And uh, y'all know it's Good Friday, so everybody will be going out, picking up stuff. We would appreciate soap, deodorant, pajamas, socks, anything. And please bring it to me by the 10th of December. By the 10th of December. Yes. Very bad. Very bad. Let us continue to do as we have I in the past. I take cash, too. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Amen. Hey, hey, anything else to draw our attention? Hey, Amen. I, I just want to say to Angela and, and, and Mrs. Tilly, we're so glad to have y'all back. Amen. Amen. We're so glad to have you back. When we started a tradition here, uh, as each new member returns or a person joins the church, we, the, from the ministerial staff, we give you a Bible. And we're also giving you a hymn book now. So on first Sunday, we will present you with your Bible and your hymn book. Amen. 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 God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. Anyhow. Hallelujah. Amen. Anyhow, don't let your troubles get you down as you go about in your daily routines. Tell somebody. Hallelujah. Anyhow. Amen. We're so glad that the Lord is still blessing us. Love ourselves. Amen. Amen. The choir has, we thank the choir for serving so absolutely today. <laughs> even with a song you hadn't even prepared for. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> if you have another closing, we, we'll take it. If not, we'll receive the, that last one as the closing. Yeah. Now, as we look to the Lord to be dismissed, May the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ rest, rule, and abide with us all henceforth and forevermore. Let this body say, Amen. 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 Tell somebody what the Lord has done in Ephesus chapter 1.